Welcome to Liberty Today 2014. Robert Brown is back today to discuss the pros and cons of a constitutional convention. Gubernatorial candidate Laura Hubble discusses the state's addiction to federal dollars. And let's get ready to rumble today. Randazzo and Gephardt duke it out over a third party. Coming up now on Liberty Today. There's quite a lot of rumble uh, throughout the country about a constitutional convention. And Robert Brown is a constitutional scholar who has some thoughts. You've been listening over the last few weeks. You've heard uh, some of his thoughts. Um, talk to our viewers a little bit about the ratification uh, process and the argument that if a constitutional convention passed something that we didn't like, well, the states would still have to ratify it so there's no danger. And that's always pointed to as the safety net in this whole process. There's nothing to worry about because, of course, the states would never ratify a bad amendment, which immediately brings to mind things like the 16th Amendment and the 17th Amendment, which I consider very bad amendments. They've been very harmful to our liberties. And so sometimes, such as in 1913, when those amendments were proposed and then later ratified, we do get the states going on board with things that aren't really in our best interests. But there's several other concerns here. One is that Article 5 gives Congress the authority to choose the method of ratification. It says that we can either have state legislatures ratify or we can call for special ratifying conventions in each state to bypass the state legislature if we feel that's a more likely way to pass. As you're listening to this, do you see some of the uh, incredible dangers? Do you really trust a group of people that we don't even know who they would be uh, to revise our Constitution? That's a scary prospect, Robert. Well, it is. And, and we have to also look at who would hold the majority at this convention. Myself, as a constitutional, limited government-minded uh, conservative, I don't see that my state or really any other that I could count on would put forward constitutionalists as their delegates to a convention. And so those that believe in limited government under the Constitution would probably be at least in a minority. They might not even have a seat at the table at this kind of a convention. So the, you're saying that uh, the ratification process could be dictated by who again? Well, actually two different parties. According to Article 5, Congress chooses whether it's the state legislatures or special ratifying conventions. Okay, now stop That's there the first one. and ask yourself, what has Congress done right lately? <laughs> so, okay, on to the and second now, option. The bigger concern is precedent. All of our attorneys in this country pre pretty much are trained in case law rather than original intent. And the case law, the precedent, that was set by the Constitutional Convention of 1787 was that the convention can write new rules for ratification. That convention in 1787 was required, whatever they pass needs to be passed by the legislatures, ratified by the legislatures of all 13 states. And they said that'll never happen. They recognized that the Constitution was a surrendering of some of the state power to the federal government. No state legislature wants to give up their power. And so they knew that would never get past the state legislature. Well, you wouldn't of all 13 think, states. but we've done it systematically over decades. Well, that's another matter. And that's largely because of the 17th Amendment. Yeah. But what happens is in Article 7 of the U.S. Constitution, the convention who wrote this Constitution wrote new rules. It says, provided that, let's see, here we go, the ratification of the conventions of nine states shall be sufficient for establishing this Constitution. So they, they lowered how many? Instead of being 13 states, they lowered the bar to just nine states. But they also didn't mention legislatures there. They said the ratification of the conventions of nine states. So they changed who ratifies as well as how many. And based on that precedent, today legal scholars could easily be justified in saying that a new convention has the authority to write new rules for ratification. So the conventions of nine states could write those rules. And that's what happened then. And, and uh, those conventions, the delegates to those conventions individually throughout the, throughout the states state by state, yeah. would be appointed by or chosen by? And that's a question. That's There's nothing dictated on how they're selected. The only time we've ever used conventions of the states for ratification is with the 21st Amendment. 
And there's a lot of question as to really how valid the selection of delegates was in that day. Would it be conceivable, would it be possible that perhaps governors or maybe even the president might have the uh, uh, the ability to steer or appoint those delegates? There's certainly a lot of questions and possibilities there, whether it be state legislatures or governors or, or maybe the voice of the people select the delegates. We don't really know how it would work out. There are a lot of questions that are not answered by any precedent because we've never used this process before. Well, you've heard the term, the devil is in the details, and in this case, we don't even know the details. It sounds a little bit like Nancy Pelosi saying, well, we have to pass it and t so we can find out what's in it. We have to call the Constitutional Convention to see how it'll work. Well, that might not work out so well for us.